You might have seen on Facebook uh, recently, this week, uh, I apparently am number five, no, number joint fourth, sorry, in the UK and Ireland for BNI for bringing visitors in July, which is quite good. Thank you. So, with that in mind, you might think I'd do an education slot today on how to find visitors and how to invite them and how to bring them to the chapter. But I'm not going to do that because we're having a bit of initiative at the moment where we're trying to get more people into the room and everybody's doing their bit to get visitors into the room. So what I'm going to talk about is what to do when they actually get here. So I am going to give you seven essential tips for what to do to make visitors feel welcome in the room when they arrive. And hopefully all the visitors today felt quite welcome when they came into the room. Okay, number one, turn up. I realise that sounds like a bit of an obvious one, but turning up to a meeting is important, and if you can't be here, then make sure you have a substitute. Equally important. Now, there are other networking groups that exist that don't have the same attendance policy that BNI has. Uh, visitors in the room who are new to BNI explain a little bit that when you join a BNI chapter, you have to attend every meeting or you have to send a substitute to every meeting. Now, that could be a work colleague, it could be a friend, it could be a supplier, it could be a client, it could be a family member, anybody you like to turn up to a meeting. It could be another BNI member from another chapter. Now, the reason that's important is because other networking groups that don't have these, import these, these restrictions on making sure you turn up to every meeting, you don't get as much business from them because they're a little bit more flexible. You can go, you can not go, you can give a contribution, you can not give a contribution. And if that's right for you, then that's great. But I'm a member of other networking groups like this, and you can not see the same person for two, three months at a time. Now, if you don't turn up to a meeting and suddenly you turn up three months later, do you think they're going to give you a referral? Do you think they're going to give you business? BNI has this attendance policy because it works and we get business from it. Steve, you were telling me earlier how much you had got in referrals in, thank in business this year since January. Can you tell us what that was? 97,000. 97,000 pounds yeah. from BNI. From BNI members in this room and other rooms. Other rooms, because you visit other chapters as well. Correct. Yes. As a sub. As a sub. Because you have the opportunity to sub at other chapters. Yeah. Which is why it's important to turn up every week or send a substitute. As I say, there are other networking groups you can go to where it doesn't have that attendance policy. But you are not going to get the kind of business. They are not set up to get you business. They are set up to be sociable. Which BNI isn't. It's also sociable. Number two. Because that was only one of seven. Ooh, we're going to be here all day. Number two. Turn up on time. Richard, what time does this networking meeting start? Well, it should start at 7 o'clock. Well, 6.45. 6.45 is the correct answer. Thank you, Richard. BNI starts at 6.45 for open networking. Not at 6.50, not at 6.55, not at 7, not at 7.05. Is it 7.04 you bring the next part of the meeting to order? Is that right? 7.04. 6.45 is when it starts for open networking. Some of the visitors were here much earlier than that. Steve, I imagine you were first. I'm picking on Steve a lot today. Sorry, sorry, Steve. Who was first in the room today, Steve? Was it you? You, of course it was. And then Cliff. And then Cliff. What time did you get here? I got here at 6.15. 6.15? Yeah. I was still in the bathroom at 6.15. <laughs> the earlier you get here, the more chance you get for networking, the more chance you get to build relationships. Steve is usually the first person in the room. It's probably no surprise that Steve earned, how much was it again? 97,000. 97,000 pounds from B&I since January. <coughs> Number three, wear your badge. Now, I know some people don't like wearing badges. They think it's like being in school, like being in nursery. The badge isn't for you, it's not for me, it's not for you, Mick. It's not so, you know, I know who you are and you know who I am because I know you know who I am. It's for the visitors. They don't know who we are. If you walk into a room of 15, 20, 30 people and you get introduced to each of them, how many of those names can you remember? <gasps> Number four, turn your phone off. No. <laughs> That's my alarm for my daughter to make sure she gets out. <laughs> I won't ring it. Okay. That's, should have brought her along. Um, the badge is there for the visitors. Now, there are memory techniques when you meet a load of people that you can remember their names. I can't do that. I'm absolutely useless at it. I can't remember somebody's name about 15 seconds after they've told me, which is why the badges are important. So you wear your badge for the visitors because if they're talking to you, and you haven't got a badge on, it's quite embarrassing for them to ask 10 minutes later, sorry, what was your name again? When there's all these people in the room. Number four, four of seven, we're getting there, we're getting there. 
don't stand in closed groups of BNI members talking to each other. Because it's very difficult for a visitor then to talk to you. If there's three of you stood together in a bit of a huddle, like this Mick, and we're talking about the football, right? We're talking about how Everton got smashed at the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Crap accent. Yeah. <laughs> it's a crap accent, that wasn't it? Right. If you that was, was that, was that. <laughs> if you're standing in closed groups and you're talking to each other, it's very difficult for someone who doesn't know you to then walk up and say hello. Not everybody is confident enough to interrupt a group and talk to them. I'm not. I don't like doing it. I hate talking to people. I prefer talking at people rather than to people. So Make sure you don't stand in closed groups of two or three people having a bit of a chat. If you've got something you need to talk about with a member, that's perfectly fine. But if you're having a chat about things that aren't that particularly relevant, keep an eye open for visitors. Number five. Introduce yourself to every visitor. They've made the effort to come here to see you. They've made the effort to get up in the morning and turn up to see us. Show that you appreciate it by walking up and talking to them and introducing yourself. Now I know Richard, you usually make an effort to do this, being chapter director, chapter president, sorry we've changed it. I've seen another chapter in the past, Dave, you used to make a really strong effort to do this as well. I saw you go around the room and you introduce yourself to every visitor personally. That's a great thing to do. Show them that you appreciate the fact that they've come along by introducing yourself to them. Number six, and we're getting there, we're getting there. Don't leave visitors, substitutes, or BNI members from other chapters, or even BNI visitors such as the director Ewan Sturman or David Williams, who visitors will get to know if you were to join us, stood on their own, not talking to anybody. Doesn't matter who they are, keep an eye open for people that have just stood there, because they don't like to walk up to people and talk to them. It's awkward, it's intimidating, particularly in a room full of people they don't know. You all know each other, they don't. And number seven, this is probably the most obvious and probably the least important, but I'm going to say it anyway, Dave Bundy. If you're in your ass, right, and you're making a cup of Rosie, yeah? How's that one? Dave. Is that, no, is that a better accent? Is that a better accent? <laughs> if you're in your ass, right, and you're making a cup of Rosie, and like Richard Medlicott pops around, what would you do? Offer him a biscuit as well. Offer, offer him a biscuit? You, you'd offer him a, a brew, wouldn't you? If you see a visitor stood there without a brew in their hand, offer them a coffee, offer them a tea. Because who's our lead visitor host? Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> this is the pick on Steve day today. Whenever a visitor comes into the room, Steve signs them in. Steve welcomes them. Steve gets the business card. He takes them for a brew. That's what Steve does. But Steve's not the only visitor host. As good as Steve is, he is just one man. He is just one man. There are other visitor hosts in the room. Put your hands up if you're a visitor host. That's right, we're all visitor hosts. It is all of our jobs to make sure that visitors have the best experience they have when they come here. Because we want them to enjoy themselves. We want them to come back. We want them to think, this is a great chapter. I'd really like to be a part of this. I'd like to put in an application. We need to make sure that they have the best experience they have when they come here. And that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you.